Hello everyone. Today we shall be discussing how does fiscal deficit affects inflation. We, in the course of our discussion to explain this phenomenon, we will be using some concepts of modern monetary theory. What is fiscal deficit? In short, fiscal deficit is the excess of government spending over its revenue. There are two ways in which the government can broadly fund its fiscal deficit. Now in the first way, the government issues debt in the market. This debt is bought by the domestic private investors. Now it's the domestic private investors money that funds the fiscal deficit of the government. In this case, little new money is created in the economy. And because of that, what we call as the phenomenon of crowding out may occur, at least on the monetary side. Now, what's this phenomenon of crowding out? Now, since the money pool is almost the same and the government is taking a, an increased share of money, lesser money remains for the private players in the economy. And hence, this can lead to an increased interest rate and lower equity investments. In the second phenomenon or the second way to fund fiscal deficit, since the government has monopoly over money supply, it can print money. How? The government issues debt. This debt is then bought by central banks. Now, the central bank can buy that government debt directly from the government, but usually it buys it indirectly through private players and how it does that by printing money issuing fresh money which in turn is deposited with the federal government thus funding its fiscal deficit in modern context this is called QE or quantitative easing what are the consequences of of the two ways of funding the fiscal deficit for the government and the economy. In both cases, the allocation or reallocation of real resources will happen in the economy. However, as we saw in the first case, since no new money or very little of new money is created in the economy, crowding out will occur on the monetary side, which can affect future investments and hence growth of the economy. In the second way, since new money is being created, no crowding out happens on the monetary side of the economy. Inflation, and this is important, inflation may or may not happen in both ways. We'll see how fiscal deficit affects inflation in the, in the further slides and how inflation can happen due to fiscal deficit. Inflation will happen due to the increased fiscal deficit only if we are close to hitting what we call boundary limits on the factors of production. So in other words, if there is slack in the factors of production, inflation is unlikely to occur. Let me explain by an example. Let's say there's a project of making a road and 100 people are employed in that project while only 50 are needed in actual. This is what we call disguised unemployment. Now, in, the, in an adjacent commercial building, there's a work going on and the contractor approaches the contractor, let's say the contractor B of that building approaches contractor A who is on the job of making the road. This contractor needs 10 workers to complete the project going on in the commercial complex. The project is installing statues to improve the aesthetic value of the, project, of the area. Now to be fair, the economic value of this project is quite small. However, since only 10 people are needed and in any case, there is slack in the labor, there's surplus labor working on the project, it's easy for the contractor A to 
give contractor B 10 laborers. With this decision, the road work is not affected in any way. The road is completed on time and howsoever small the economic value of the project of the project of installing statues to improve the aesthetic value is, the economy gains overall and there is no inflation. Same example, but turn around, but tweak the scenario a little bit. In this case, all 100 people are needed to make the road. And the contractor B again approaches contractor A to get 10 workers. However, this time, the contractor A declines to, to give workers to contractor B as all are needed to complete the road. Hence, contractor B offers to pay 1.5 times of wages to laborers to the laborers. That means inflation has increased in the economy since the wages of the laborers have gone up. Now, because of this, since inflation has increased in the economy, the road work also gets affected since all 100 people are needed to complete the road 10 move to complete the project in the commercial building that has low economic value. This is the road project is delayed. The pro overall productivity of the economy is also affected. And hence, in this scenario, there is inflation. This also leads to slowdown in the economy. Unlike the previous scenario when there was slack available in the labor supply. Let's say in this case, the government increases its fiscal deficit and out of its benevolence, doubles the health outlay in the economy so that all needy poor people get health cover. What will happen? You know, a technological marvel that can improve the productivity may take one or two years to create, get created. A large expressway can be done, done in three to four years. But to create a doctor, it takes about 30 years. It's a human capital that takes a long time to create. And no matter, no matter the amount of money, no money can help beyond a point in that. And so, if the government does that, where would be that? Where would the good quality doctors come from? And hence, because of this very decision, if it, increasing fiscal deficit in this way will immediately ensure that the boundary limits are hit. And that means the healthcare costs will zoom across the country. And this would affect the poor and the middle class in the worst possible way, quite contrary to what the government's intentions were. This time in poverty elevation. Now, if the government spends aggressively on poverty elevation, the demand will increase and this and the supply would not be able to catch up immediately. This increases inflation. Sure, there would be some supply that would come on board in three to four years time, but it will not be sufficient. Why? Because again, lack of human capital. Some basic supply can come online, but beyond that, it will require good, skilled, knowledgeable workers to produce goods, which will be lacking in the economy. And again, since we have hit the boundary limits and there's no slack of labor available in the economy, inflation increase in this case as well. And we have discussed this in some other presentations of about inflation and money supply, but I'll discuss it briefly here. Inflation overall in the economy, if it goes on for a longer time, leads to one thing, which is wealth transfer from poor or middle class to asset owners who are usually rich people. Well, as price increases, so does the profitability of the industries. With increased profitability of the industries, the equity prices go higher. The salary prices, the salaries would increase to some nominal extent, but not enough to catch up to the purchase, to losing purchasing power, except in some niche areas. 
That means overall the asset owners are gain at the expense of poor and middle class people. Final points before we end the presentation. Fiscal deficit achieved either through money printing or selling of debt to the private investors leading to a crowding out of private investments will lead to inflation only if the factors of production as we saw are close to their boundary limits. If a lot of slack is present in the economy then inflation is unlikely. So I would say it's better to have fiscal deficit through money printing and this will prevent crowding out of private investment as if a fiscal deficit is achieved through selling of debt to private investors it can lower the demand in other sectors of the economy and can lead to an inefficient allocation of the resources and in case someone is fearing that this can stoke inflation then as we as i said before inflation can only happen if not a lot of slack is present in the economy and in case the resources are tight and there is fear of inflation then actually the government should resist should the government should resist in in buying in increasing its fiscal deficit during high inflationary periods so actually it's not just how fiscal deficit affects inflation that we saw it's also important to note that it's actually how inflation also affects the fiscal deficit policy of the government and finally only in some rare situations when the government wants to control some skewed demand or some kind of a wealth transfer it wants to make is when the fiscal deficit should increase through crowding out process so thank you very much for watching the presentation do subscribe if you like such content and comment in case you have any queries thank you